share points on the left and teams on the right look pretty different, but actually if you create a new one, it does all the same stuff behind the scenes, more or less. I'm going to showcase what the differences are. My name is David Van Eyman. and I do tons of videos on Excel, PowerPoint, SharePoint, Teams, OneDrive, Google Sheets, Zoom, anything that you're using within the office, I'm making videos on it. All right, so let's go through an analogy to explain what's going on. I think of the back end as a bit like a warehouse where you have all the messy, very disorganized place that things are being kept just in order for them to give a nicer way for people to interact with it through a front end. And now, typically you would go to a shop or an e-commerce website to buy these goods. However, if you really wanted to, you could also access them directly via the warehouse. And uh, I like to think of a SharePoint site as sort of being the warehouse that you can kind of make a little bit nicer, but the team's channel could be this sort of storefront where all the stuff is stored in the back end in the same way, but it's just an easier way to manage it and to share it with other people. So teams, I like to think of it as having four different functionalities a way to chat within Teams or individually, integration with lots and lots of different apps, ways to meet up with people online, kind of like Zoom or Google Meet, and ways to share files as well. So I've got other videos where I talk about a few of these things. I'm going to, in this video, focus on the way to sort of create new Teams and what impact that has on SharePoint. So looking at it in a Venn diagram sort of way, Teams has all those four things. SharePoint has a few additional things like a navigation page that you can make and other applications like SharePoint lists. From Teams, you can sort of click here and choose join or create a team. And then I'm gonna create one build from scratch. You can do any one of those things. They all create the same sort of environment. It's just this one has extra permission and security settings this one comes on everyone by default as it says so let's create a new public one I'm gonna give it a name so test for video nice work and then I can add members but I'm gonna just skip that because it's public anyway so what's that done it's now created a general channel I can create other channels if I want to and it's created these three things so posts, files, and wiki. Wiki is just a way to take notes that's built in. Uh, it can do other things, so I can just sort of type in something there. It's very, very, very simple text editor and create a new section as needed as I want. Chat is built into everything with Teams, so you can sort of chat there and it starts a conversation with everyone who has editing rights to this team. Uh, and they also post it here. Now you can also press the plus button and add other kinds of applications, including some that are created by default when you create a team like OneNote, Planner or SharePoint and just other third party tools as well. You can just scroll down the list to your heart's content. So for example, if I go to OneNote, this is the default one, I press save and it creates it there. I can edit it directly from within this. I can also rename it as I wish. What's interesting is the files bit. So if I click on files, I can then go to open in SharePoint. That will open up this SharePoint page. And as you can see, it's just essentially done that. It's opened up in SharePoint. Um, and if I want to, I can just access the rest of this SharePoint site through all of these other things. So it creates by default this sort of blank SharePoint template that I've done, and I'm gonna show us how to customize that in a bit. But firstly, let's go the other way. So what I can do is I can press create site and create a team site, give this a name. Notice that a team site is connected to an Office 365 group. Uh, that is different to creating a communication site, which is not created to an Office 365 group. 
I'm going to talk about what that means in a little bit. But for now, let's create a site name. So site from SharePoint like that and then just press next. I can add other people if I want to, but for now I'm just going to hit finish and it's created all of these things. And again, this is a concept known as an Office 365 group. Notice it prompts me to create a team from here. A SharePoint site is effectively an intranet site that you can build to help your users navigate to document anything and everything within your organization. Now from those SharePoint sites, I can edit it and do a whole load of things like add different web parts over here like this. And I'm not going to talk too much about it, but you can add sort of text. And what you're doing is you're coming up with a way that people can access things directly within your SharePoint site and look at images. You can make it very pretty, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, you can change the layout as well um, as you wish this way. Now, just to show you an alternative to a SharePoint site, it's this other app called Sway. I really, really love Sway. I have another video that's devoted directly to it. Just like SharePoint, you can add different types of things. It's a little bit more limited, but what's really cool is the way you can start from a document and the way that you can then sort of customize it. So Sway does a lot of the layout, cool navigation stuff for you. So all of this stuff I barely had to do. It's also got these cool ways to see images. You can embed any content directly within it like you can within SharePoint. But these animations and these effects, this sort of style Sway does for you. Embedded videos, etc., etc. So you can navigate to Sway by this and clicking on Sway there. And what I really like is you can start from a document. So you can actually import an existing Word file and then th this can transform it pretty quickly and pretty easily into a Sway file. So back on the two, let's go to teams and I'm going to create or join a team you Can go here, create one and create from Office 365 group. I can choose this one and site from SharePoint. That's the one that I built. Notice this symbol means that it's a private one. So as you can see, I'm going from SharePoint to teams and teams to SharePoint pretty easily. And we are talking about Office 365 groups. So let me go back to my slides and explain that in a little bit of detail. So um, we have this overlap between what SharePoint does and what Teams does. But actually, an Office 365 group is governing everything. So that creates the SharePoint site, which has these things, navigation, a SharePoint list, which is optional, uh, apps and documents. And then you also create, by default, a planner plan, a OneNote notebook, an Outlook distribution list, sort of, called a group, and an Outlook calendar that's for the entire group. Now, um, I have other videos where I talk about planner and another one about OneNote. From here, I can navigate to anything on the left pane here. If I click on conversations, that opens up this site, which is actually an email address that is for my entire group. So here it says, welcome to the site from the SharePoint group. And it said everything that I can do from it. I can start a conversation and that will effectively be an email address for an entire group, kind of like a modern way to do distribution lists. Even when I'm in Outlook desktop, I can just sort of get in here on the site navigation, I can get to my groups. And if I want to, I can even drag an email directly into that group. And then it tells me, are you sure? I can say yes. This is a brand new feature that you can do this. And you get all of this special tab in here that's only related to the group. The Outlook calendar allows you to go to group calendars and add one like this. And then you can make an appointment in it like you could in a regular calendar. And effectively, everyone who's a part of the group is invited to that. Press save and close and it's over there. And what's useful is being able to overlay it on top of your regular calendar. So if you click on this button, 
but then Outlook Desktop, it does that. And it shows you in different colors, the different meetings. So back in my mailbox, I can go to the notebook. And this actually opens up a blank notebook that's created as part of the Office 365 group. So back in here, you might notice that I don't see things like calendar and uh, planner. If you go to edit, you can just sort of add something, for example, the calendar, press OK. And let's also add the planner like that, press OK. Office 365 Groups was created before Teams, not by very much. Um, I found it really confusing, to be honest, when they had both of them called very similar names. The idea was that SharePoint has always been pretty weak at allowing people to have conversations with each other. So initially they thought that email was the answer and having an integration with Outlook. And that's why they created this groups feature that also allows you to create the special email, the special calendar, etc. But then they also later on created Teams, which is a completely different way of doing conversations. That's a lot more modern, particularly for people who are used to using WhatsApp or Facebook Messenger or Telegram or those kind of services. So essentially now what they've done is they've sort of moved to pushing people to use Teams, but that also creates the groups in the background. So that was Office 365 groups with the Outlook calendar and the mail. Next, to just emphasize that Teams does come into that, as I showed you there. And you also have other integrations, things like Power BI and Microsoft Forms are also sort of governed by Office 365 groups. So essentially, when you create something new with either Teams or SharePoint, you are behind the scenes creating an Office 365 group that's governing it all. So the default comes with the chat stuff and also a folder view to see your stuff and also a wiki page. You can then add optionally more notes through OneNote and the SharePoint sites. You can add onto Teams as well, as well as a planner site as well that can be edited directly within Teams as well as being edited directly within SharePoint. Hidden away is your Office 365 group calendar and your mail Box. So you cannot add those if you start from Teams. It's a little bit confusing as to why, but if you start from SharePoint, then you can have all of this and add everything eventually. So if you like this video, then please feel free to hit the subscribe button because I have tons of new content all the time coming out.